What's up folks? Today I'm going to be showing you a game called Black Box. This game came out in 1978 by Parker Brothers and it is for one or two players. Black Box kind of reminds me a little bit of the game Battleship because one of the players is going to be trying to find marbles. The other player is going to be hiding them. Um, the person that hides the marbles is going to have them labeled on a little sheet and the person that is actually seeking the marbles is going to be calling out different numbers. Now the person who has hidden the marbles is going to be giving different clues as to where these marbles are and it's going to be up to the guy who is seeking the marbles to try to find them using deduction skill. This is a pretty little unique game and let me show you how it works. Okay, well, here is the box itself. It has this nice little cover on it. I just kind of thought it was cool. I'll open it up here. There we go. And here we have a whole bunch of parts, and I'll just go ahead and show them to you real quick. First thing you have here is the scorecard. Um, the person who is hiding the marbles is going to be marking where those marbles are on this little pad here, and the score is going to be kept here. These, of course, are your marbles. There's five of these. You have a little Crayola thing that you're going to be using to mark on the pad. And then these here are your what we call rays or whatever. Um, these different colors and these different symbols mean different things, and I'll explain to you what they mean here in just a little minute. Now let's say I had the marbles hidden over here like so, and the person who is seeking them is going to try to find them. Now there are three tiles. This tile is used if the person scores what's called a hit. If he ends up calling a number in which a marble is in the same column, such as this is number 19, if you were to call 19, I would go up and this would be called a hit. Now I would not say where the marble would be, I would just simply say that it was a hit. And then that person would go ahead and put a red marker on there like so to indicate that he hit a marble somewhere. The second one is called the detour. The detour, you're going to be using these orange markers, and these are paired off in different symbols. Uh, here's an example. There's two symbols of the same kind here. And the way this works is, let's say uh, the seeker called out the number 18. What happens is this ray is going to go up to the point where it is directly diagonal of a marble, either to the left or the right. If it is to the left, the ray is going to veer off this way. If it is to the right, it's going to veer off the other way. So what's going to happen is I will simply say um, number 15, which is over here. So then the person who called out number 19 will put a marker here to indicate that's the number he called, and the number 15 to indicate this is where the ray went. So this is going to give the person a clue that there could be a marble over here. And the third one is called the reflection. Now this one's a tricky one. A reflection basically happens when a marble when there's a couple of marbles that are going to end up re, uh, reflecting the ray back into this original row over here. So, for example, if the person was to call the number 20, the ray would go up here, and since it goes right or left, it can't go either, it's going to go bounce back to here, and so I would just simply call reflection number 20, and then this is the reflection tag right here, and then the person would go ahead and put it there. So a lot of what makes this game unique is just trying to set the marbles up in a way um, that's going to make it hard. Because obviously if I were to like say call the number 11 and then the ray would go here and go here, the person would probably be able to guess that the marble was right here. That would be obvious. But if I was to set the marbles up in a certain way where they'd be bouncing off multiple marbles, it's going to make it a lot harder. Let's say I called out the number 13 and wanted to confuse my opponent with the setup that I have. Uh, the ray would start here and then it would go here bounce off this, go here, bounce off this, a hit would then be scored on this ball. The hider would then call out the number 13, which was the original number the seeker said. That basically is how the game works. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a little practice game here for you just to show you how it works. Okay, for practice, let's say that I, the hider went ahead and put the marbles like this, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and be the seeker. So I'm going to look at the board here and I'm going to just simply call a number. And let's say I call out the number 18. So the hider is going to look at this, and he's going to look and see what is in 18. Now, as you can see, on the number 12, there is a um, adjacent marker that's going to go. So I will go here, and then here, and I will call a hit on row number 18. When you score a hit like this, the number that the hider is going to call will be the same number that the seeker called out, as opposed to the row where the marble was found person will put a red marker here on 18 and let's say I call out the number 21. Again I'm going to go ahead and look at this sheet here and uh, 21 there is a marble uh, next door again so again I'm going to go like this I'm actually just going to go straight up like this and say 
number 25. So now he's going to take these two orange marble, these two orange markers, like so. Let me grab another one here, right here, and I'll put the other one right here. So now let's say the seeker is looking. He figures, okay, since it bounced off here and went here, there might be a marble right over here. So he's going to place a marble here, just for the hay of it. He might be able to. He can move it anytime he wants. So. Now he's going to try to see if he can figure out where one of these marbles are. So he goes ahead and he calls out the number 7. Looking once again at this sheet, uh, number 7, there is a, a number 12. As you can see, there's a 12 adjacent to that column. So he's going to go this way and then go here. And then he is going to go this way. And then he's going to go back down and call a hit right here. So then once again, he'll go ahead and place uh, a marker on the number 7. Now also, I forgot to mention that um, there's no marbles anywhere on this row or near it. In this case, you'll just simply say that there's nothing. and The seeker would then simply put two matching orange markers on either side of the row. Ultimately, what's going to happen is the seeker is going to go ahead and place the marbles where he thinks they are. And he wants to try to do it in as few terms as possible. The way the scoring works is there's one point for each one of these markers that is used. Um, if he gets any, if he gets the marbles right, he's not going to lose any points. However, if he guesses some of the marbles wrong, he's going to lose some points. And then you just basically do as many rounds as you'd like, and the person that has the lowest score is the winner. My thoughts on this: I really like this game. I'd give this game probably a six out of ten. It's uh, not difficult like say Super Mastermind. But at the same time, it's challenging, and you can make this game as easy or as hard as you like. I really like it, so I recommend it. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe. Thanks, and have a great day.